Hi everyone. Last time we ended with a question. How long does it take for a Markov chain to get close to its stationary distribution? Soon we will see how to answer this question. However, we first need to talk about what we mean by two distributions getting close to each other. That leads us to the topic of this video, which is the total variation distance. The total variation distance is defined as follows. Suppose that d1 and d2 are distributions that have support on some countable set S. Just as an aside, this definition goes through just fine for uncountable sets, but then we have to take integrals and stuff and gross. Um, so let's, let's assume S is countable. Then the total variation distance between d1 and d2 is defined as follows. So it's denoted like this, at least in this video, it's denoted like that. And it's defined like this. So you can think of this as one half of the L1 norm between the probability mass functions of d1 and d2. So it's the sum over all s in my set s of the difference absolute value between the probability of s under d1 and the probability of s under d2. It turns out that this definition is the same as this other definition, the maximum over all subsets A of s. Think of this as all events A of the probability of that event A under D1 minus the probability of that event A under D2. To see why these are the same, let's draw a picture. So suppose that the probability mass function of D1 looks something like this. And the probability mass function of D2 maybe looks something like this. Here the x-axis is meant to be the set S, and the y-axis is the probability under these various distributions. Now we can break up S into two sets. The set where the PMF of D1 is bigger than the PMF of D2. That's this set here highlighted in green. I'm also going to highlight this area in green. because It'll come up in a minute. Let's call that set A. And then we have the set of points in S where the PMF of D2 is bigger than the PMF of D1. So let's make that set yellow and let's call it B. Then the total variation distance between D1 and D2 is equal to the green area, that is all of this area here, and it's also equal to the yellow area that is this area here. One way to see that is that the green area plus the yellow area is equal to this sum without the one half, and then the green area is half of it and the yellow area is also half of it by symmetry. This green area is also easily seen to be the probability under D1 of the set A minus the probability under D2 of the set A. And that's the expression here. So this set A uh, turns out to be the set that uh, attains this maximum. If you haven't seen this before, it's a good exercise to stare at these two definitions for a little while and convince yourself that they're the same. Here's a useful fact about total variation distance, which is the dual definition of total variation distance. So suppose that J is a joint distribution over random variables x and y, so that the marginal distribution of x is equal to d1 and the marginal distribution of y is equal to d2, but they might be correlated in some funny way. Then the fact says the total variation distance between d1 and d2 is at most the probability that x is not equal to y. Further, there exists some j star, some joint distribution on x and y, so that this inequality is an equality. This fact might be a bit hard to parse just looking at it very abstractly, so let's see an example. I've written the fact up here so you can keep looking at it, and here's the example. Suppose that D1 is just a fair coin flip, so 50% heads, 50% tails. D2 is a coin flip that lands heads with probability 0.6 and tails with probability 0.4. Now let's consider this joint distribution. 
So over here, I'll have x equals heads or x equals tails. Up here, I'll have y equals heads or y equals tails. The probability of each outcome will be as follows. So with probability a half, both x and y are heads. With probability 0, x is heads and y is tails. With probability 0 0.1, x is tails and y is heads. And with probability 0 0.4, both are tails. We can check that this joint distribution gives us the desired marginals. That is, the probability that x is equal to heads is indeed 0 0.5. You can tell that by adding up these two numbers. And similarly, the probability that y is equal to heads is equal to 0 0.6. You can tell that by adding up these two numbers. Now, what is the probability that x is not equal to y? Well, this probability is just 0 0.1. It's the sum of these two numbers. On the other hand, the total variation distance between d1 and d2 is by definition equal to 1 half times 0 0.5 minus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4, which is equal to 0 0.1. So in this case, they happen to be the same. Here we have a joint distribution on x and y, so that the probability that x is not equal to y is the same as the total variation distance between d1 and d2. Further, I claim that we can't really fiddle with this distribution to decrease the probability that x is not equal to y. To see why, imagine what would happen if we tried. We'd have to somehow move this mass, this is the, the mass on the event that x is not equal to y, somewhere else. We'd either have to move it here, or we'd have to move it there. But that would change the marginal distributions. For example, if we tried to move this mass here, it would become too likely that x was equal to heads. And if we tried to move this mass here, it would become too likely that y was equal to tails. So we can't really fiddle with this distribution to decrease this probability anymore without changing the marginals. So hopefully that gives some intuition for why this statement is true. Now that we intuitively understand the fact, let's see a proof. As before, let's define sets A and B so that A is the set of x's where d1 of x is greater than or equal to d2 of x and b is the set of x's where d1 of x is less than d2 of x. So our picture looks like this. Here's the probability mass function for d1. Here's the probability mass function for d2. This set here is a, and this set here is b. Now, let's define some parameter p to be the sum over x of the minimum of d1 of x and d2 of x. Now, I claim that 1 minus p is equal to the total variation distance between d1 and d2. To see why, note that the total variation distance between d1 and d2 is equal to the sum over x in a of d1 of x minus d2 of x. That is, that's this area here. We saw that this is one of the ways of defining the total variation distance earlier. Thus, 1 minus p, so this is equal to 1 minus the sum over x in a of d2 of x minus the sum over x in b of d1 of x. Here, I'm just using the definition of p and observing that the minimum is attained on a by d2 and on b by d1. Again, by just by the definitions of a and b. Now what I'm going to do is write 1 in a funny way. So I'll say that this whole thing is equal to the sum over x in a of d1 of x plus the sum over x in b of d1 of x. Since a and b partition the space, this is just 1, so I'm just rewriting that 1, minus what I had before. 
Now, fortunately, these two things cancel. And this is equal to the sum over x in a of d1 of x minus d2 of x, which we just decided up here was equal to the total variation distance between d1 and d2. So this proves the claim. Great. OK, why did we want to prove the claim? Remember that we were uh, proving this statement here. So let's carry on with that. Our next goal is going to be to construct a distribution J star, a joint distribution on X and Y, so that the marginal distributions of X and Y are equal to D1 and D2 respectively, and also so that the probability that X is not equal to Y is exactly one over P. We're sort of starting with this second statement in the fact. We are going to define this distribution as follows. What we're going to do first is we're going to flip a p-biased coin for this value of p here. And if the coin comes up heads, we're going to draw from one distribution. And if the coin comes up tails, we're going to draw from a different distribution. So let's see what that looks like. So with probability p, what we're going to do is we're going to draw x, some little x, in s with probability 1 over p times the minimum of d1x and d2x. Notice by the definition of p, p here is just the sum over x of all of these things. This is a legit probability distribution. That is, by sum over all x, they'll sum to 1. Then after drawing this little x, I'm going to set capital X equal to capital Y equal to little x. So that's what I do if my p-biased coin comes up heads. On the other hand, if it comes up tails, so with probability 1 minus p, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to draw capital X and capital Y separately. So capital X is going to get some little x, where each little x is chosen with probability proportional to d1 of x minus d2 of x, if x is in a, and 0 otherwise. Here, this symbol means proportional to. It's not an alpha. That is, the probability that I pick any particular little x is this thing divided by the sum over all of those things. I just didn't want to write the big nasty sum on the slide. Here, my set A is the same set A that it was before. A is the set of things in S, so that D1 is bigger than D2. Because of that definition, notice that this is always positive. So again, this is a legit distribution. So that's what I'm going to do for x. What am I going to do for y? Basically, the analogous thing. y is going to get some little y, which is chosen with probability proportional to d2 of y minus d1 of y if y is in b and 0 otherwise. OK, so this distribution probably looks a little bit funny. But I claim that it's actually really natural. To see why it's natural, let's draw a picture. So I'm going to use this picture up here. So first, let's think about this distribution. What is this distribution that we're drawing from with probability p? Well, copying and pasting this picture down here, this distribution is just a rescaled version of this distribution. That is, it's given by the minimum of these two probability mass functions. Now, how about this distribution? Once again, copying and pasting my picture, this distribution is just a scaled version of this distribution. That is, the probability that I pick some x in a is this minus that, or is proportional to that. And the probability that I pick some x in b is just 0. So it's just some scaled version of that distribution. And finally, for the last thing, once again copying and pasting my picture, this distribution is some rescaled version of this distribution. That is, the probability of picking some y in b is proportional to this minus that. Once we've drawn this picture, hopefully it's a little bit more clear what's going on. 
In particular, looking at this picture, we can see that this distribution has the correct marginals. To see why, let's think about the distribution just of x, so the marginal distribution of x in this joint distribution. So with probability p, x is going to get chosen from this distribution, which is not quite the distribution for d1 because we're missing this uh, mass up here. But then with probability 1 minus p, we're going to choose x from this missing mass. And putting those two things together is going to give us the right marginal, which is d1. Similarly, if we think about the marginal distribution for y, then with probability p, we'll sample from here, but we'll be missing this mass for d2. And with probability 1 minus p, we will sample from that missing mass. And altogether, we'll have a marginal distribution that looks like d2. I'm not going to do out the calculations, but if this seems fishy to you, it's a good idea to pause the video now and actually work out the calculations and make sure that this joint distribution has the right marginals. Moreover, this joint distribution has the property that the probability that x is not equal to y is exactly equal to 1 minus p. We can see that because this is the situation where x is not equal to y, and we just said that that always happens with probability 1 minus p. Okay, so now we've constructed this distribution j star. So that proves this second statement in the fact. How about the first statement? To see the first statement of the fact, that is, that any joint distribution on x and y has the probability that x not equal to y at least 1 minus p, let's observe that in j star, the distribution we just constructed, we had that for all x, the probability that x is equal to y is equal to little x was the minimum of d1x and d2x. This just followed from the definition of j star from the previous slide. Now, let's see what happens if we try to make this collision probability just a little bit larger. I claim that if we do that, we're going to change the marginal distribution of x and y. To see y, suppose that the probability that x is equal to y is equal to some little x is bigger than this. Let's say it's greater than or equal to the minimum of d1x and d2x plus some epsilon. And without loss of generality, let's say that the minimum is attained by d1x. But if that's true, then the probability that capital X is equal to little x, well, this is equal to the probability that capital X is equal to capital Y is equal to little x, plus the probability that capital X is equal to little x and y is not equal to little x. But this is at least the probability that x is equal to y is equal to little x, because I'm just dropping this term, which is not less than 0. And this is equal to d1 of x plus epsilon by our assumption here. But then we've messed up the marginals. Now the probability that big X is equal to little x is not d1 of x, but in fact is greater than or equal to d1 of x plus some positive epsilon. So that means that this cannot be made larger for any x. That implies that the probability that x equals y cannot be made any larger, or equivalently, the probability that x is not equal to y cannot be made any smaller. Therefore, for j star, we just saw that the probability that x is not equal to y was exactly equal to 1 minus p. And this argument shows that for any other distribution j, the probability that x is not equal to y must be no smaller than 1 minus p. Since we already had that 1 minus p was equal to the total variation distance between d1 and d2 by the claim, this proves the fact. That is, the total variation distance is bounded above by the probability that x is not equal to y, where x and y follow any joint distributions that have the appropriate marginals. And also there's some j star, which we found explicitly, so this is inequality. Great, so that's it for this video. In future videos, we will use the definition of total variation distance, and crucially, we'll use this fact in order to bound mixing times of Markov chains. See you in the next video, and thanks for watching.